let's get started. Do you remember what we were talking about last class? Do you? <laughs> no? Okay, let me let me give you a little a little refresh. Um, equivalent systems, right. If you have a lot here, another lot here, and another lot here, let's say you have that in a beam. Let's say you have that in a beam here like that. Uh, let's say you have a, a, a load of uh, four uh, pounds or six pounds, three pounds, and these distances are, let's say this is one support here, another support here, and this is a uh, two feet, two feet, three feet, two feet. If I want to replace these forces by just one, what do I do? First, the, the equivalent force has to be equal to the summation of those three, right? So that's the first, the first, uh, the first condition. Let's call it the resultant of those three has to be the summation of those three. Summation of four plus six plus three, right? So the resultant will be 13 pounds, right? So you're going to have a 13 pound force for sure. So your system will be another force here. Equivalent to that one. To, to those three. The, the thing is, I don't know where to put it, right? Let's, let's put it over here. So I will have a 13 pound force at what distance? So we call that distance X bar, right? So the force is equivalent to that one because it has the same magnitude, four plus six plus three, 13. But in order for that force to be equivalent to those three, it has to be a very specific distance, right? What is the condition of that distance? Well, the condition is that the moment produced by the three forces with respect to any point has to be equal to the moment produced by this force to the same point. So let's choose a point. Usually, usually you put this point A here, right? Doesn't matter the point. We did, we did, we translate in last class, we translate some forces to one point, one point next, next to a different point, and we saw that everything was equivalent. So in this case, the moment produced by all, the, all those forces, uh, that will be, let's call it total moment, equal to four times two, correct? Plus six times four, plus 13 times 7, right? What do you get there? So now the moment produced by this 13 pound force has to be equal to that moment, right? So 123 pounds feet has to be equal to 13 pounds times that whatever distance should be x bar. So from here I can get that x bar is equal to 123 pounds to 13 pounds. What did you get there? 123 divided by 13. Anybody? Anybody? 9.46. All right, 9.46. And then, let's see, this is the, just last, the, the final answer, so this is 50. All right, so the force will be a 13, 13, the resultant or the will be a 13 pounds at 9.46 feet from A. Okay, that's understood, right? That's what we did last class, just a little review. Okay, now we're gonna talk about distributed loads. How can we deal with distributed loads? Let me draw a distributed load here, a very general case of a distributed load. 
let's say you have a beam here and this is a distributed load it's not a point load it's a load that is distributed all over the length of a beam or whatever element you think so we usually represent this kind of load by a bunch of arrows like this If this is a beam, let's say this is the this is the length of the beam L here, right? But any point here on the beam will be a point at a distance x. And the magnitude of the load at every point over the beam is different, right? So it's gonna be a function of x. At this x is this value. At this at this x here, it will be this value. At this x here will be this value. So it's it, it could be a constant value that will be a constant constant distributed load or uniformly distributed load or a triangular load or any any shape so that's what is called a, a load that is a function of x so we will call it in general w of x a function w of x so this will be the axis that show me the magnitude of the load at every specific point over the bound, over the beam all right, so how can I deal with this kind of load? We, uh, to this point, are only able to deal with concentrated loads. So we should be able to replace this load by a, by a concentrated load, but it has to be a very specific point, so it is equivalent to this. So we need to find that distance. And also we need to find what is the magnitude. The magnitude of this load, let's put it here somewhere, let's put it over here. It will be something like a load here, right? It will be like, I, I usually call it the total weight here, the total weight. And all that load, imagine it's some weight over a beam. So all that load has a total magnitude. That will be, well, just the summation of all that load. But how can I get that summation? For that purpose, we do an integral of those that we already distributed loads. So we, what we do is we divide all these loads in little pieces, like rectangular pieces like this very thin and if this is very thin this distance um, since it's very thin we can consider that it, the, the load is constant in that little piece so we can consider that little red rectangle uh, as a rectangle that has a base of called dw dw and the height is whatever the function of the load is in that point. So that will be W of X at this point. This will be, or, or, or maybe I can put it like this. This height is W of X at that specific point X. This is W of X. So if you consider just a tiny rectangle, differential width dx and the height is the magnitude or the intensity of the of the load in that point the load produced by that little rectangle oh sorry uh, sorry here i don't say dw i say double D, dx dx this is dx this is dx the horizontal length of that little rectangle and the height is wx so the the area of this red rectangle or the intensity of that load equivalent to that little rectangle is we can call it dw will be equal to uh, w of x dx okay is it clear what we are doing there Since it's very, very thin, we can consider that, that the variation of the load, the variation of the load in that tiny little space is almost nothing. So we can consider constant of a value of W of X at that point. So that height multiplied by the base, which is DX, gives me the area of that rectangle, which is how much load goes into that thin, thin portion of the load. The load corresponding to this little rectangle 
is this height times this horizontal dx, so the area of this rectangle. Now if I want the total load for all this load here, will be this rectangle plus another one that I put next to that, plus, another, plus all the rectangles that I can make little like that from x equals to c to, to x equals, equals to l. Right? And that's, that's the concept of the integral, right? So the total weight, the total weight will be the integral from 0 to L of W of X dx, right? And that's basically the area and then under that curve. This equation here is the area under this curve from here to here. Just integrated this differential here, which is this rectangle, this summation of all the rectangles like this one that I can get all this uh, from zero to it. You actually are dividing this to infinite number of rectangles here that follow the shape of this function here. So if you know the function of this distribution here, you can get the total weight. It's basically the area under the curve. All right, so that's the total weight. So now we know the, the magnitude of this force here. We know the magnitude of the force. We, where are we going to locate that? So I'm gonna put here this value, let's call it as before x bar. How can I get x bar? What is the concept before getting this x bar? The concept is that the moment produced by all this, that would be the moment produced by all these little rectangles here, one here, another here, another here, another here. The moment produced by each one of those has to equal, the summation of all those moments has to equal to the moment produced by this total load, right? So I need to calculate the moment of all those little loads. So I'm gonna do, imagine each one of those little little loads is, let me, let me put it, that one here, stir in red. So I have a little rectangle here, but it's gonna be infinite of them. And that rectangle is at a distance x from the origin here, and this is a tiny, a tiny force that we call dW, is dW, which is W of x dx. So the tiny moment that this force, the force produced by the rectangle, this one right here, is gonna be force times distance, right? Distance to point, let's call it here point A, well, it's actually the origin, point O. This is point O. So this force times this distance is the moment of this rectangle with respect to this point. Now I have to get the summation of all these little moments for all those rectangles here from zero to n. So that's another integral. Integral means summation, right? So I'm gonna do now the, the, the total moment, let's call it mt, is equal to the integral from zero to l the moment produced by this force. So that moment is W of x dx multiplied by the distance, and the distance is x, right? Force times this, I'm gonna put the, the distance here behind x, right? So that's the total moment produced by all the little rectangles. And that moment has to be equal to the force the total force WT, WT, multiplied by the distance at which I should locate that force in order to get the same value of the moment, so times x bar, times x bar, right? So solving for x bar, I will have equal to integral from zero to L of x, W of x, dx, divided by Wt. In, in general, you could do here x0 to L, x, wx, 
dx divided by, and the total force is 0 to L of Wx dx, right? Oh, where is this? Dx. Okay? That's how you calculate the location, the location of the force that is equivalent to this. So basically, when you want to replace a distributed load by an equivalent load, you have to find the, the magnitude of the, the, the whole load, which is the area under the curve that describes the load, all this area, which is this integral. Um, and then let's call that WT. You have to calculate the moment produced by all that area, understood as the, the, the little rectangles here, and that moment will be uh, the force of each one little rectangle multiplied by the lever arm or the distance, the distance here, this x. So you have that integral. This is the moment of all these components of the total load with respect to this point. You divide those two and you get the location of the equivalent load. So now you know how to. Mm -hmm. oh, so x bar is wt, the location of this? The location of this. This, this x bar goes here. Is the location of the equivalent load. Yes? I think the 13 in the first part is supposed to be 3 times 7. 3 times 7? 3 times 7? Oh, you're yeah, talking about the problem up here? Yeah. We made a mistake there? I think it's supposed to be 3 times 7. Yes, yes, you're right. Yes, yes, this is three. Yeah, three, this is three. Yeah, you're right. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a three. Yeah, the total load is 13. That one here goes 13. You're right. Okay, let's go back to here. Any questions about this? Yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. So, like, could we call WT, like, uh, the resultant of, like, Yes, 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 yes. You can put the name that you like better. You, you can, the, 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 yeah, put the name, yeah. Sometimes I call it Rosita. <laughs> Could be anything. As long well as it makes sense to you, maybe resultant makes more sense. Just that. like simple terms. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Uh, and, and actually, when I was preparing this before, I called this R. Oh, R T or something, and then it makes that mistake with another letter that you just later. I don't know. Let's go back. Call it the total weight, but some people don't like to call this weight. It's load. Put any name you want as long as you understand. and it makes sense. And if somebody reads, will understand what you are you are talking about. Okay. Well, this is better with numbers, right? Let's do that with numbers. Let's do a simple a simple example with numbers. Um, make sure you have this, this, well, these equations are not difficult, right? It's just the area under one, the area under, under a, a function here, right? And this is the, the area times the location of each one of the differential of area. You can call it area. This, this is area, right? But be aware that the, this is not units of area. This is not units of area because you have length on this axis and distributed load on this axis. So in this axis, you have something like pounds per foot or newtons per meter. So if you get the area of this, you will get, you will get like if, if you have in the horizontal axis meters and you have here newtons per meter, if you multiply meters by newtons per meter in order to get an area here, well, you will get newtons, right? Newtons per meter, multiply by meter, you get newtons. Well, it's units of force, right? Because we are calculating forces. This is a force. Okay, let's do, let's do an example. Let's do this example. So, 
we can consider this, let me put it here, like, like in more in the terms that we are doing in the explanation. I have this axis like this, and this is X. This is the origin. This is W of X. And then I have this low that is a, a straight low that is coming down like this. And then we represent this with a bunch of arrows These arrows, you, you can put more arrows, not, not too many, not too, not too few. It's just a representation of the fact that the load is applied all over the place. You, never have, you don't have to count these arrows or anything like that, right? Just a representation of a distributed load all over the length of the beam. And the intensity of the load at this point is 150. So you have a 150 here. And this intensity here is 120 pounds per foot. And this location, this X here is nine. So that means that this length is nine, right? The units on uh, this axis, the units on this axis is pounds per foot. As they, if you have like a, 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 like a scale here, it will be in pounds per feet, right? This is 150 pounds per feet. All right, so we have to, in order to do those integrals that we were talking before, well, we need to find the equation of this W of X, right? You can get me the equation of that W of X. You should be able, right? Let me help oh, you, you. Somebody want to shoot it? It's a straight line, right? There's no integral. What? It's like, is it still using the same formula even though it's a straight line? Well, yes. Uh, we, if the first equation was, let's call it like you want, the resultant of all that thing will be integral from 0 to 9 of W of x dx, right? And W of x is any shape that you want here. In this case, I put it really easy. As, a straight line so you don't get confused with a complicated equation, but you understand the concept. But this could be any form. In this case, it happened to be a straight line, so it's easy for us to get it. What is the W of X when you have a straight line? Well, it's a, it's a straight line. Do you know the equation of the straight line? In general? The, the formula? Exactly. Right? That's the equation of a straight line. In this case, in this case, the slope is, is 120 minus 150, right? That would be the, the slope, 120 minus 150 divided by 9. So this is minus 30 over 9. That's the slope. And what is B? What is B in this equation, in this line? 150. 150. That's B, 150. So our equation here is... W of x is equal to minus mx, so minus 30 over 9x plus b, right? 150. You, you, you can put the units on for this stuff on a little bit of the units so we don't carry along so many letters there. So if we want to find the, the, the resultant, right? Let's put it here. Let me put the resultant right here. This is, let's call it resultant. Oh, I know why I didn't, I changed it later. I'm gonna tell you in a second. So what is the magnitude of that resultant? Well, it's the area of that trapezoid, right? Well, we're gonna do it as an integral and then we check if it's really the area of the, of the trapezoid. So resultant will be equal to the integral from zero to nine of W of X dx. So it will be the integral from 0 to 9 of W of X is minus 30 over 9 times X plus 150 dx. So that will be equal to minus 30 over 9 X squared over 2 plus 150 X from 0 to 9, right? 
So that will be minus 30 over 9 times 9 squared over 2 plus 150 times 9, right? Everything correct? Everything correct? Mistakes? No? Just simple integral, right? You guys uh, took your calculus recently, right? You, you probably remember that better than I did. So that will be equal to, I got that to be equal to um, 12.15. Yeah, I got the same thing. 12.15. We'll, we'll check that later. Now let's calculate the moment, the moment of these little forces, WXDX, with respect to O. So we just multiply this by the distance of each one of the tiny rectangles, which is X, in order to have it as a general formulation to put into the integral. So the moment, let's call it, um, let's call it mm, moment, total moment, M, M total equals to integral from 0 to 9 of x, w of x, dx. So that will be integral from 0 to 9 of x times w of x is again minus 30 over 9 x plus 150 Mm, dx, so that will be equal to mm, minus 30 over 9, so this is x squared, and when I do the integral, it will be x cubed over 3, plus 150x, 150x will be, the integral will be 150x squared over 2, right? 150x squared over 2, no, no, Ah, oh, yes, 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 square over 2. From 0 to 9. Uh -huh. So that gives us here a minus 30 over 9 times a 9 cube over 3 plus 150, well, 150 over 2 is 75, 75 times 9 squared, which is 81, so this should give me, and this is 81 over nothing, and this is 3, this will be 10, so it will be 81, well, something like that. For that, what did you get? What did you get? What do you get for that operation? Five two six five. Yes, I got. Five two six five. This is units of uh, pounds times feet, because that's a moment, and the unit of the twelve fifteen was uh, pounds. So if I want the location x bar of this, put it here, x bar. So x bar times r has to be equal to 50 to 65, right? The moment of this force multiplied by this distance has to be equal to this, which is the moment of all the linear forces all over the place. So x bar. Let's put it here, let's put it here. 52, 65 pound feet has to be equal to the resultant, which is 12, 15 pounds multiplied by X bar. So from here we get X bar equals to 52, 65 pounds feet over 12, 15 pounds. So that gives that give you I want more than one result here. Hmm? Ah, anybody else? You got that? You got that? Who else is doing calculations? 
get to practice your use of your calculator so when you get to your exam you know how to use your calculator very well you don't get any other what happened Area, so like doing it by the yeah, we're gonna do that. Oh, okay. gonna do that. But I want you to understand how to do integral because when you get something weird, which you have to integrate, there is no way to use. Yeah, when you get simple areas like a straight line, straight line, you you use rectangles, triangles, right? We're gonna do it next. So, four thirty-three feet. But actually, we don't do trapezoid here. We're gonna do it right now. We divide this into simpler. Um, a simpler figure because basically what you're doing here finding this x bar 433 what we just found is the centroid of this area and you know the centroid of the trapezoid anybody knows this what is the location of the centroid of a trapezoid we don't know it right we don't know i don't know it well you can google it right well we usually do we break this into a triangle and a rectangle we know the centroid of a triangle and the centroid of a rectangle, yes? Uh, what is on, um, uh, for n total, after the integral, how can you have x to the third? Okay, are we taking it from this, this? above or are we taking it from the left? Th this one? Yeah. Well, this is 30 over 9 times oh, never mind. x times x. x. Okay. Right? So this is... This is x squared. The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Yeah, and then the integral of 150 times x is 150 x squared over 2. All right? That. Don't do it again. All right. Good. Good. Ask anything, please. So, Okay. So let's do the same problem just by areas. Just by areas. Now we know the concept that the equivalent force is the area under the curve. Well, let's use direct areas, so we know the formula for some areas. So is that it for this question? Hmm? Is that it for this question? Yeah. 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 What? Did we find everything for this Yeah, question? we found everything. We, we found that the equivalent force to this trapezoid is R equals to 1215, and the location is 43. You want to put it here, will be the answer will be the equivalent force will be... Um, the force that is equivalent to that trapezoid thing is equivalent uh, load R equals 12, 15 pounds at 4.33 feet from, from left end of the beam. Is it clear? Is it clear for everybody how I express the result? And that will be the force so that the sum of all for like the moment and everything equals zero. Oh, oh, no, 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 not equal zero. It's just now, when if you if they give you this, this load to that beam and, she, uh, and you need to analyze the equilibrium of that beam, I'm going to deal with that thing. That is horrible. Uh, I better replace that. I better replace this by just a concentrated load, which is easier to. Okay. So now, instead of using this ugly thing, which was here, even this very beautiful the drawing, this ugly thing, now I'm going to do, instead of that, I'm going to use my beam. This is my beam. Oops. This is my beam. And I'll put one load here of 12. 15 pounds at 433 feet. Uh, I better work with this to analyze equilibrium. There will be cases where you can use this instead of that ugly thing. In some other cases, you have to use the ugly thing. When we study distribution of moments, well, internal forces, we need to we need to use the whole thing. But for equilibrium, we can use this instead of that thing. All right, okay, let's do it. Um, let's do it by dividing that into, into what? Into um, simpler figures. Based. Okay, so we're going to divide this into 
figures which I know the location of the centroid. So I divide this into a triangle and a rectangle. So I divide this like this. So I use this, this triangle and this rectangle. The triangle will be uh, replaced by an equivalent force here. Let's put a different color here. Okay, that will be some piece. The, the, I'm gonna call it the force of the triangle. And then the rectangle, I'm gonna put it over here. The force of the rectangle. And I put the force of the triangle more <coughs> towards the left because you see there is more load here than over there. So it's not gonna be in the middle like the rectangle. The rectangle is in the middle because it's symmetric, right? It's right in the middle. The triangle is gonna be one third one third of the of the length. Do you know that? We studied that in this class? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna study in detail later, but for now, just believe me. But we're gonna see it here, right? Um, we can do an example of just a triangle. So the area of the triangle. So we have a force, a force uh, due to the triangle equals to one half of the the this magnitude this length of the triangle which is 150 minus 120 so this is 30 right 30 <coughs> times the total base here 9 so what did you get here 15 times 9 you got it let, let me put it clear here. This is one half of one fifty minus one twenty. Is the the thirty is this magnitude here? Oh, it's the difference. Yeah. Right, the height from 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 one twenty all the way to one fifty. Mm -hmm. Right. And nine is the base nine times nine. What do you get? One thirty five. Let's let's put all the units. Let's put all the units to make sure everything is correct. So I have one half of uh, let's put here 30. 30, the units here is pound per foot. So there will be pound per foot. And the nine will be foot, right? So this will be 135 pounds, right? Let's do the force of the rectangle. The force of the rectangle will be easier, will be 120 pounds per foot feet times nine feet, one, 1,080-something pounds. Okay, so the total resultant, right, will be the triangle plus the rectangle, so it will be 135 plus 180, guess what, this is zero five. Uh, oh, oh, what? No, no, five, eleven. Um, what? Uh, I don't know how much. Two? It's 12, 15. Twelve, fifteen. Twelve, fifteen pounds. Did we get the same last time? The total load? Twelve, fifteen. We got over there, right? Twelve, fifteen. So the total load is equal to the areas as we just proved. Now the moment. Let's calculate the total moment total moment is equal to the moment of this force plus the moment of this force. The moment of this force is 135 multiplied by this distance. What is that distance? 135 multiplied by this distance is this distance here. This distance is 
one third of nine, one third of the base in the triangle, the location of the center is one third of the base. So that will be three, right? One third of nine. So what is, oh, okay. This is the moment of this force. The moment of this force is that force 1080 <coughs> multiplied by 4.5. So plus 1080 multiplied by one half of nine. Right? So what do we get for that? You see how I do the operations with this magic? Mm -hmm. huh? How do you like it? Huh? Equals five, two, six, five pound feet, which has to be the same value we got here, right? So for those shapes, isn't always one third and one half? For, for the rectangle, yes. For the triangle, yes. One third, when you have a triangle, one and a half. The rectangle is kind of easy to understand, right? If you have a force that is perfectly uniform like this, where do you put the, 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 the equivalent to that force? In the middle, right? There is no, like, like no, 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 no way to think it's somewhere different, right? But if you have a triangle, well, it cannot be in the middle, right? You, 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 you can feel that a, a lot that is equivalent to, to, equivalent to this cannot be in the middle. It has to be like a little towards the left here over here. So we will see when we study centroids that is one third of the base. So if this is B, if I put the equivalent load over here, this distance is one third of B and this other distance will be the other two-thirds of B, right? You, sh you should get that into your head already. It's a very useful information that you know. For the triangle, the centroid is at one-third to towards one side, two-thirds to the other side, all right? Okay, now let's verify the X bar. X bar will be the summation of these two forces somewhere here in the middle that we can call R, right? R, R will be, um, we already have it, right? Actually, R multiplied by X bar, X bar will be this distance here, X bar, is equal to the total moment 5265. So from here, and we did already that X bar equals to 5265 divided by R, which is this value here, this value here. 1215, we did that already, the same operation, it's gonna be the same operation that we did right before, and this has to give you 433, right? Okay, the same, the same 4.33 that we just found here. Uh, over there. Over there. Okay, okay, for, for simple, Figures like rectangles and triangles, you replace by a triangle, and the, you do you then locate the equivalent load of the triangle to one third towards the big side, two thirds towards the little side. When it, you replace it by a rectangle, you just put it right in the middle, and and then the rest, as we know, summation of all the forces multiplied by x bar has to be equal to the summation of the moments of the of the little forces. With respect to a point that you choose anywhere, well, usually we use this one in beams, right? The left x, the left end, or the beam. But you can use any point you want. Okay. Any questions? Does it matter how we choose to solve it, like in the homework and stuff? The what? Does it matter? Does it matter how we choose to solve it, rather like integration or vibration and stuff? No, no, it doesn't matter. Unless no, no, uh, you, you, you use. Areas like this, if it's simple areas, triangle and rectangle, other than that, you could have to go with integral, right? Let's do an example where you have to go with integral. Let's do an example where you have to go with integral. Mm. 
this you have to do it by integral, right? There is no other choice. I I don't expect you to to find the 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 shape of the I mean the equation of the parabola. Uh, in a case like this, I will give you the the equation as I did right there. But if we if if, if we have our uh, geometry knowledge more fresh, we should be able to find the equation of a parabola given a couple of points, right? Let's assume that we know the equation is right there, and then let's find the equivalent the equivalent force here. There will be an equivalent force here. I'm gonna call it resultant here. And at what distance it is. Okay, so we have here the equation of the parabola. So first we are going to find the magnitude of the resultant that magnitude of that resultant will be the integral from 0 to 4 of wx dx. So that will be the integral from 0 to 4 of w. w of x is minus 37.5 x squared plus 300 x plus 200 times dx. So you, you, you should be able to do that integral, right? Just go one by one. Minus 37, 37.5 x cubed over 3 plus 300 x squared over 2 plus 200x from 0 to 4. So that will be minus 37.5 4 cube over 3 plus 150 times 16, shall I put 4 over 2 so you don't get lost, plus 200 times 4. Hmm? What, what do you get? Let's see what I get here. Hmm? Let me see if I got the same thing. Oh, uh, twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. That will be newtons. That will be newtons. No, now we have the magnitude of the force. Now let's get the moment of all that area. And then we do the division, right? So what we're going to calculate here is what I usually call here mt, the total moment, or, or f dot, will be the integral from 0 to 4 of x wx dx. So it will be integral of 0 to 4 of x minus 37.5 x squared plus 300 x plus 200 dx. Can I do the integral directly from there? Or do I have to expand it? Well, let's do it really quickly so nobody gets lost. So this will be minus 37.5 x cubed plus 300x squared plus 200x 
uh, integral, right? I need to replace this by integral. Integral from 0 to 4 dx. dx. So this will be equal to minus 37 minus 37.5 x 4 over 4 I have y to the 4, no, it's actually, yeah, x, by x squared, yeah, x4 over 4, plus 300 <coughs> x cubed over 3, plus 200 x squared over 2, from 0 to 4, x squared over 2, yeah, x squared over 2, x4 over 4. So we need to replace all those numbers, minus 37.5, uh, 4 cubed over 4, plus 300, 4 cubed over 30, plus 200, 4 squared over 2, and whatever you can get from there, let's see. If you got the same, I hope I don't get any. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, looks like okay. Seventy four hundred, you got? Yeah. All oh, right. I have seventy four hundred. That's what I got. I got five thousand six hundred. You know, I think that's, yeah, I should have an error here somewhere, 37.5, 4Q over 4, plus 304Q over 3, plus 24. I believe more, more that, that number that I got before, 5600, I don't believe that number very well. I don't know where is the error that the computer made there. It's 37.5, 4Q over 4, 4Q over 4. 4Q over 4. Mm -hmm. 4. 300. Uh, what, anybody else got a number? Yeah, 5600. 5600, right? Uh, the power in the front, I think it's supposed to be 4, right? Which one? The one on top. You have two. It's 4 to the power of 3. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I was hoping somebody find the error. Yeah, this is, this is wrong, right? This is wrong. This is this here. It's actually 4 to the 4. 4 to the 4. Oops. Thank you. Good eyes. Yes, 5600. Good. You only have to do those, those check, double check those things. So easy to make mistakes. So this is. 5600. So what do we have to do now? X bar. X bar. So now we know that this force has to produce some moment equal to this value by multiplying by X bar. So 2400, 2400 times X bar has to be equal to the total moment 5600. So X bar has to be equal to 5600 divided by 2400. Two point three three. Good. Two point three three meters. So equivalent. Load R equals twenty four hundred newtons at two point thirty three meters from left end. Good. Right. Uh, now let's do another example with simple figures. And I will give you in Canvas another example of another integral like this. 
So you can take a look at that. Maybe we can start doing this problem here. On that, uh, that last one real quick. What? No, no more. <laughs> I just wanna what? See the bottom. I just want to finish copying something. Yes. And then the two twenty four hundred times x bar. Where does that come from again? I don't wanna tell you. That's from <laughs> This force is R, right? It's the equivalent force. We yeah. found this force. <laughs> and what distance you have to put it? Well, this distance multiplied by this force is uh, the moment here, right? Moment. Has to be equal to the moment produced by the whole distributed thing. And that moment is this. So that's what we say here. 2400, the force times x bar has to be equal to the moment of the whole distributed load. So from here you solve for x bar. Right? X bar is this divided by this. Okay? Good. Question? More questions? No. No? Questions? Everything good? No more questions? Um, for the 24, right above, the equation above it, you divided 300 by 2 to get the 150. How come you didn't divide 37.5 by 3? Oh, because I don't know the table of 37.5. <laughs> I know the table of 300. Divided by 2 is 150. I can do it on my head. This I do it in the computer. Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you do your, 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 your arithmetic, you do any way you want. I just try to put some simple numbers here. This is easy, right? This is easy. Mm. I was going to do here 4 to the 3 directly, right? But I just left it like that. You can find the arithmetic any way you want. Calculator will do everything for you. Okay, next. Next, no more questions. Okay, let's do this example. How you divide this in order to get... Um, same thing. The, Find the magnitude and location of the resultant of all these distributed load. So, uh, how would you divide this load to find the equivalent? So, Could you break in the shapes again? Yes, yes. Uh, here we are not going to do integrals because there is no like a, a one function for all this stuff. Better break a triangle here and another triangle here. So, on a big rectangle, so that will be like a triangle here. Uh, increase this a little bit. A triangle here. And another triangle here. So, I have... Let's call it here. I will have one force here for the triangle that I call F1. Another force here for the rectangle. I'm going to call it F2. And another force here for the other triangle, F3. All right? So let's, let's do this really quickly because we don't have much time. F1. Mm. One half of what? Quickly, quickly. Not so quickly. <laughs> Three, Three times 1.5. Everybody agree? Plus, ah no, equal, equal. So let's do this. One half three, one point five. That's one point five times one point five, right? Two point twenty five. Two point twenty five kilonewtons. At what distance from the point O? Let's do everything all the moments with respect to point O. So what is the distance of that force with respect to point O? Uh, mm-hmm. One third of what? One third of the base here. One third of, <coughs> imagine in the middle will be 0 0.75, but it's a little to the left, so it's one, one third of 1 1.5. At 0 0.5. F2. 
What will be the area for F2? Oh, it would be this whole, this whole rectangle, look, this whole rectangle. The height here is 5, right? Yeah. 5 for all these. So 5 times 1.5 times 0.75 divided by 2, right? Half of all this. So that will be times, let's do it like this, 1 half of 1.5 plus 0 0.75. So what do you get there? How come it's one half again? No, no, I'm not saying, no, no, I, I was saying about the distance. Yeah, the distance. Uh, 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 um, uh, it's too late for me, I should be in, like, in bed already. <laughs> Yes, yes, no. yes, sorry, <laughs> this is crazy. We are trying to calculate first the, the area, right? The area is this times this, so five times the summation of these two. Five times, five times the summation of 1.5 plus 0 0.75, right? <laughs> Equals to, I was going too fast, I was already calculating the distance. 5 times 1.5 plus 0.75, 11.25, 11.25, yes, kilonewtons, and now at what distance? 1.25. Yeah, I'm going to put here for clarity of everybody, this is one third of 1.5, and here is one half of 1.5 plus 0.75, and this is what? 1.125. 1.125. I believe you because nobody has given me numbers here. I don't know. Everybody hates me. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to be different. Okay, next. F3. F3. It's another triangle. So it's one half of what? One half times five, 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 six, five times zero point seventy five, right? <coughs> Equals to <coughs> yes, yes, one point eight seven five. You got the same thing? I can't find anything in my answer. One point eight seven five. One point eight seven five. At what distance? At what? At what distance? Hmm? Mm -hmm. That will be point twenty-five, right? Shall I put one uh, zero point twenty-five? Is the distance from this point? Oh, right, because it's the moment of this force with respect to this point. So it's the total distance from this force to this point. It's the whole distance. So it's one third of this, okay, 0.25, but you still have to add all this stuff, right? Right, so you have to add, so that will be at uh, <laughs> 1.5 plus 0 0.75 plus one third of 0 0.75. So that gives you what, two meters? Mm, no, 2.5? Well, I guess I have to do it with the magic of my notebook here. <coughs> oh, something, I have something wrong here and didn't understand this correctly. Sometimes that's, if you don't uh, write very clearly, it doesn't understand correctly. What did you get? Why is Kim Kim getting a minus there? So that's not right. What did you get? Three point five. Three point two point five? Two point five. Two point five. I keep this next to me all the time because I don't trust everything the computers say. Um one point five, yes. Uh one point five. Uh, I don't have one point one two five. 
Yeah, 1.125 for the other one and 2.5 for the last one. Okay, so the moment of F1. Oh, let, let's do the, 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 the resultant. The total force will be F1 plus F2 plus F3, right? That will be 225 plus 1125 plus 1. 875, right? That's the summation of all the forces, the three forces. That summation should give me um, 15, 15, 375. What? Yeah, that's What? Everything correct? Mm -hmm. This is kilonewtons. Now, the moment. We need to calculate the moments of the moment the moments of all the little forces. Let's put here total moment, total moment. It will be equal to the force 225 times the distance. Oh, I never put the the the, the one third of point seven. Sorry. I never wrote the distance of this force here. Wait, I never put the answer. No, oh, 0.5, 0.5, right? Zero point five. Let's put here, equals to 0 0.5 meters. Plus the moment of the second force, the, this one, 11.25. 11.25 times the distance, 1.125. Plus this other force, 1.875, right? 1.875 times the distance, 2.5. 2.5. If I do that operation, I should get something like, what do you get? What do you get? What do you get? 18.469. 18.469 kilonewtons meters. So now if I want to get the location, M dot has to be equal to R times X bar. So therefore, X bar equals to the total moment, 18.469 kilonewtons meter divided by R, which is this 15. <coughs> 0.375 kilonewtons. So kilonewtons go with kilonewtons, and with this in meters, get the same for 18, 15, 1.205, 1.201 meters. Did you get the same thing? So equivalent load R equals. 15.4 kilonewtons at 1.2 meters from left end. Good. Mm -hmm. Or you can do something like R equals 15.4 kilonewtons, X bar equals 1.20 meter. And you put the nice rectangle in red, in red. Okay? That's another way to put the answer. Maybe it cannot be easier, nicer. Questions? Let me let me put it here. Here. What is 1.20? 1.20. So the the resultant will be 1.20. Will be somewhere like over here, right? One point two. What was the the value? Um, Fifteen point four. Would be another way to show the, the resultant of that thing. Okay, questions. I can put this on the on the on the cast on the canvas also.
Let's go down. Go down a little. Or maybe like this. How about like this? How about like this? The whole thing in one shot. Hmm? Good. That's how you replace distributed loads by equivalent concentrated forces.